As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be due up due to rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And that's what's been wrong with me and you, our brook's been dried up. <laughs> it's fixing to rain. That's right. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise! Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. He called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it, and he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathered two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall a cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the sin of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of all fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. 2 Kings 4 and 1. I want to talk to you for just a little bit about God will provide. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all that thy neighbors even empty vessels, bar not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. It came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And they all stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for that that I feel in my heart, my soul. And I appreciate this service tonight. Lord, I ask that you would touch every heart and move for every individual. Lord, it's gathered here. And I claim that that I felt this evening, that that I've been feeling stronger and stronger, Lord, for the last two or three hours or so, as of now, about coming to the top, going to the top of the mountain. Praise God. And I believe that you've got your people ready, Lord, for them to march to the top of the mountain. I believe we're fixing to come to a height in you that we've never known before, to a depth that's never been fathomed before. In the name of Jesus, we believe it. I accept it. I accept it for these people, to everyone that believe it, let them receive. 
For we ask it in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, we know that anything that's ever accomplished any getting ahead that we do in this life, naturally or spiritually, we have to believe that we can do it. You have to believe that you can reach a certain height or position in your employment. How many of us that's right? When you work on a natural job, you, you can have what you work for. And you can make it to the top. There's very few people if they really set their mind to it, there's very few people that can't make it to the top. If you really set a goal, you can reach that goal. But anything worth having is worth suffering for. And it's worth going through hardships to achieve how many of it is. Hallelujah. Now, I married the girl that I love because I didn't give up until she became my wife. Amen. And I could have married uh, another girl, or there was other girls that I could have married, but she was for me. Now we have uh, uh, what's called fatuations and things like that when we're young a lot of times, and we have what you call like puppy love, and we think we love this and we think we love the other one. But when your real true love comes along, well, you're going to know it. How at least that's right. And you can have that that's meant for you. If they're not meant for you, you don't need them know how because they put a greater burden on you than what you already got. Is that right? And I'm going to talk in the natural a while, then we're going to get to the spiritual. Hallelujah. But I believe that we can get in Christ where we want to get in Him. But I believe that it's all uphill. I don't believe there's no easy going. I don't believe there's no easy ground. But I believe it's pray. Fast, read the Word of God, go to church, study the Bible, witness, testify, and all these things. I believe we have to be active in order to get closer to the Lord. And I made a statement the other night down to the house, and I said, I'd like to get to know Jesus better. And they, I might have made that statement before, but it never did mean to me what it did the other night. And sometimes you can say something in your own self and it come out of your own mouth and it seems like it just uh, it rings a bell for you. Seems like it means more to you than you might have said a thousand times before, but it never did really mean anything to you. But when I made that statement in our kitchen the other night, I said, I'd want to get, I'd like to get to know Jesus better than what I know him. In other words, I'd like to get truly acquainted with Jesus. I like to get acquainted with Jesus like I'm acquainted with Brother Billy or, or Brother Wesley or, or somebody else. I like to be acquainted with him like that. How many would like to know him like that? Hallelujah. Well, I believe we can. I believe that we can come into a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That we can know him. That we can know that, that he would desire us to know. And we can be that that He'd desire us to be. It's the Lord's will for us to, to prosper. How many it is? We've talked about that a lot of times. Just recently, the other day, I received a magazine from a, from a young man over in Alabama. And uh, it was the beginning. It was, uh, I think it might have been his fourth magazine, according to the, the volume and the number on it. It was probably maybe his fourth magazine. But I had to admire the effort that he had put forth. Hallelujah. How many knows in order to have something other, you've got to sacrifice for it? There's always a sacrifice in order to achieve anything. There's always a sacrifice. My son-in-law's working on a job right now, and it's a great stress on him. It's a great strain on him. But he wanted to get this certain position, and he made his mind up that he would get this position, and he worked until he got it. Even though the job is, is big for him and, it, and it, takes a, it takes a lot for him to be able to make it on this job. But he's hanging on to it. He's holding on to it. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what are you trying to say tonight? I'm trying to tell you we'll turn all of our teachings of the Lord 
and believe that the Lord will come to me in you. I'm telling you that he'll come to me in you and he will have companionship with me and you if we desire him to. And we can know him when we go out and we can know him when we come in. Hallelujah. And he will supply my new ever need according to them great riches that stored up in glory for me and you. If my new faith can hold on to God, if we can believe God, there'll come a day that we'll be able to rejoice and say it's been worth it all. It's been worth it every bit for the trials and the troubles. Hallelujah. The sadness that we had to endure in order to cover this place. When I look back on my life as a Christian, I look back uh, on my life in the ministry, I know that the Lord's brought me from a long way from where I started out. Hallelujah. And when I walk uh, in the back, the two back rooms of that house, and we got an well, office in our own house now, and uh, then we got this recording room, a recording studio where I make radio broadcasts, where I make these tapes and all these things, and we got all this uh, sophisticated equipment uh, that the Lord's put in our hands to do something for God with. Uh, it makes me proud. When you look around, sometimes the devil will tell you you ain't got nothing uh, and you're not getting nowhere, but I want you to know the Lord has brought me and you people a long way from where we started and since that we started over here on Dry Street, hallelujah God brought us off the Dry Street and he knows it did hallelujah to God, I said he brought us off the Dry Street and he's going to bring us into something greater than we've ever been in before and he believes it's the truth hallelujah and he knows that Elijah had his dried street. He had his dried brook. And he knows the brook had dried up. Hallelujah. I remember when people trying to stop us on dry street. On dried street. But thank God. And he knows it rained on us a little bit. We got a little moisture rain. And it gave us encouragement to go on. And the voice of the Lord came forth and said, Arise. Hallelujah. And go to slide hill. And we arose and came to slide hill. Then the Lord said arise and go to pick a unit. And we arose and we come to pick a unit. And he say amen to God. And we've had some wet times and we've had some dry times here. How many believe we have? Hallelujah. We come up here, we got right in the midst of a great outpouring, a great Holy Ghost rain. It was a rain in here we got you. We opened this church up here, and you know people come from far and wide, just like it was prophesied that they would. They come from the east and the west and north and the south, just like it was prophesied. Hallelujah. Well, God was honoring that move that we made from Slide L and over here to Crossroads. I'm not at the Crossroads no more. How many knows that we done come off a dry street? We done pass through the Crossroads, and we done got our sights set on the, the Son of the Living God. Amen. And we behold the Lamb and we on our way to better things. And the Lord told me today, He said, You're believing, you receive it. He said, You exercise and work with everything that you got and put it to use for my glory. He said, I'll bring you to the top of the mountain. He said, I told you, hallelujah, that you can come to the top of the mountain. And He said, You can make it. Hallelujah. And those that will listen to you and those that will hear the words that I give unto you, that speak unto them and believe. Hallelujah, I told you these things. He said, I'll bring them up there with you. Hallelujah. And we're going to rejoice up on top of the mountain. And it's amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Every man of God in the Bible ever obtained anything, ever got anywhere in the Lord, they had to go through a dry place. How many knows it is? Hallelujah. When it got so dry one time that all, all the ditches and the rivers and the creeks and everything had dried up. Naturally speaking, it is the same hand. Hallelujah to God. It got so dry one time that people's flesh had consumed up and it became a bunch of dry bones. How I many those have always been dry ditches? There's always been dry brooks. They've always been dry bones in the Bible. Can you say man? But you let the wind of the Holy Ghost and the rain. Hey Amen. How I many those when the wind starts blowing and it begins to cloud up? Nobody said it's getting cloudy outside. They look like we're going to have a storm. But let me tell you one thing. There's one thing that can come behind a storm. And that's a brighter day. I mean, those that's right. And we done been through the dry places. We done been through the storm. And God told me Wednesday night of last week. He said you made it through it. 
He said you broke through that thing. He said you start believing it. Amen to God. He said you can have whatever you will. He said start preaching like you ain't never preached before. Amen to God. And I saw the blessing of the Lord being turned loose from the pearls of glory. And I saw the hundreds and the thousands while ago. And there's a blowing through the air. And there was a blowing this way. And all my little needs is going to be supplied. God told me this season. He said, I will supply your every need. He said, have faith in me and believe it to be sure. And he said, shall come to pass that everything according to your faith. He said, it shall be paid in full. Hallelujah. Am I sure glory to God? And I believe it. Can you say praise God? How many believes it? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Show your hands and tell the Lord you love him. I said, go ahead and tell him how much you love him right now. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the people was in doubt in the book of Psalms. And they asked this question, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Amen. They said, there ain't nothing out here to eat. I don't know what we're going to do out here. We're going to starve to death. I was reading over yonder this scene in the book of, in the book of Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. Where God said he'd provide everything for the Israelites, the children of Israel, if they trust in him and believe in his name. Hallelujah. That everything, every one of their needs would be provided for. Amen. God's not going to let me you go hungry. God's not going to let me you go thirsty. How many believes he ain't? But he's going to supply my your every need. Have I say glory to Jesus? I want you to know it's been rough. It's been tough and it's been hard. But I believe if you'll hold on, hallelujah to that nail that their nail scar hand long enough. I believe the Lord will bring you through. They say man. Yes, he will. I said he'll bring you through. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. It's time to get in a prayer closet somewhere. How many believes it is? It's time again to believe in God and do what He said He'd do. Oh, yes. God's got the power. God's got the strength. It means you can have the faith. It means you can just believe. Glory to God. I was walking around outside yesterday around the house. I was walking outside around the house today. I looked up this way and down the other way. And all I could see was pretty green grass of glory. Hallelujah. God, everything looked good. The future looked bright to me. I'm accepted for what it is. And I believe that greater things are coming. God ain't going to give me you something that can see me upon all of us. But we'll humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. God going to see to it. And everything that means you desire. Amen. If it don't, how do you cause us to see it? God going to see to it. And every one of my your needs is going to be supplied. Because he told me today, he said, God will provide. How many knows the Lord? He'll provide for us. And we'll let him. Yes, he will. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's like this revival. I saw any question about what to go or not because of the, the financial. I'm tired of being helped back because of some of oh, the oh, stinking, filthy lucre. Hallelujah. I'm tired of money causing me, hallelujah, to be tore up and tore down in spirit. I'm tired of worrying over everything that comes along. Hey, Amen. I want to enjoy myself. I want to enjoy my salvation. How I many of you want to enjoy your salvation? I done put everything in the hands of God. If God wants us to have it, he's big enough to speak to somebody. I'll hear him how many he is. God's big enough to get a hold of somebody and cause him to bless hallelujah the work of the Lord and mind your every need shall be supplied. I know it's God's will to have a church house. I know it's God's will to have the ministry like unto Jesus Christ. I know it's God's will that we preach repentance and salvation and we bring forth deliverance. I know it's God's will to live for him. I know it's God's will to have a holy church it's God's will for holy people to live in this crooked and perverse generation and God said all he's saying you gotta do is believe and you receive it and you can believe it and you say man thank you Jesus 
Hallelujah. But you had them skeptics. You had those doubters. And you had those unbelievers. Right there. When God was delivering them. God was delivering them. And they doubted him while he was delivering them. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine being bound down and tied up and like chains around you? And the change is breaking off of you all the time. You've gotten more freedom and more liberty, more victory in Jesus than you've ever had before. Can you imagine the devil coming and trying to inject doubt into you and cause you to lose faith and confidence in the Lord? Hallelujah to God. Well, that's, what, that's what the devil did to the children of Israel. How many knows it did? They started questioning God. They could begin to question all the works of God. Hallelujah. Somebody spoke up one day. It's in the light. We're going to start to death out here. I don't know where we're going to get anything to eat. I said, I don't either. It's not what spoke up. I said, can God furnish a table? in this world is I'm here to tell you God can and God's going to do it and it's going to rain I said it's going to rain upon the children of God I said go blessed be the name of Jesus it's been a good service to be blessed in I'm going believe this is a good service I need to get the yoke off of you it's a good service to receive something of the Lord oh yes it is praise him anyhow hallelujah God said you want to go to the top. He said you can go to the top. He said you broke through now. Amen. I ain't gonna let hell the high water stop me from going now because I know if the Lord be for you then who can be against you and God's on my side. I mean believe this is the truth. Go ahead and tell me what he says. Thank you Jesus. He real how those is. Yes, he is. He said, I provided Abraham a sacrifice. Didn't I? He said, I sustained the widow women. Didn't I? In the days of Elijah. In the days of Elisha, both. How many of those Bible said it's both widow women? One of them said, well, said, thy servant, my husband, is dead. That means that she was a widow woman. Her husband died. Hallelujah. And the other one just come right straight out and said it was a widow woman. How I many was the first one I read to just come right straight out and said it's a widow woman? Hallelujah. This other one said her husband's my husband's dead. Hallelujah. You say, God. Hallelujah. Some sons that's left. He done went on to meet the maker. Oh my God. He said, looks like it. we're going to die here. But how many knows a man of God walked in the camp? I said, a man of God walked in the camp. That's what me and you need. We need a man of God to be in my new camp. We need to be in the camp where the man of God's at. Because this world will stand. It don't make no difference what people say about you. It don't matter what they think about you. I want you to know this anointing is going to bring me and you through. It's going to bring me and you through the valley. It's going to bring me and you through the dry places. Hallelujah. I feel like all my your ditches has been dried up. It's about I feel like we ain't had no moisture much left. I feel like there ain't been no healing. There ain't been no bomb in Gilead. But God God's going to pour out hallelujah, the healing power. I want you to know we're going to have a bomb for healing. Somebody say amen. God's going to anoint my new eyes with our shame. And we're going to be able to see. We're going to be able to see the miracles and the things of the Lord. God's going to do a work, a wondrous work in the earth. Oh, yes, he is. God's going to turn his word loose from the four ends of the earth. Amen to God. And I saw that you Young preachers uh, and beginners uh, and handmaidens uh, is going to be able to do something uh, for the Lord God uh, according to their faith. Come uh, I say praise God. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh yes. Now feel that liberty. Now feel that victory that we sought God for. Hallelujah. Amen to God. God told me, he said, you're worried over a few thousand dollars. He said, it's all mine. He told me, he said, quit worrying over it. Sister said here the other night, she heard an Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Saxon word for 
uh, where it was choking. I heard that too. That's right. The, the meaning of the word weary is to choke. Hallelujah. There's a great man of God one time, a great deliverance preacher proved that worry caused cancer. Hallelujah. Proved it to be so. How many of that worry work on your nervous system? You worry yourself sick. You can't be at your best. And hallelujah, your nervous system get all messed up. How many knows you ain't got no resistance against any kind of disease or epidemic that comes out against you? You gotta have a strong resistance, and you'll never have a strong resistance. Hallelujah, unless you got strong nerves. How many knows the Lord wants me you to be in good courage? He wants me you to be bold and good courage. Amen. If you are, if you are bold, if you are good courage, you gotta. I have nerves of steel. How many believe that's right? If you got nerves of steel, your resistance is sky high. And let the floods and the flame and the diseases and the epidemics come your way. Amen. They can't penetrate you. And you say, man. And besides all that, God told me there's such a thing as a resistant power. And that's the Holy Ghost. Then you got the Holy Ghost. Then you got the that resistant power and they can't nothing hallelujah attack me and you if we trust God hallelujah says right hallelujah oh yes thank you Jesus well you get nervous and upset you can't sleep right you can't eat right I don't care what you got you ain't happy You could own all a slight L and half a picky you. If your nerves is not calm, you're miserable. Amen. Hallelujah. How many knows that's right? I'd rather have calm nerves. Hallelujah. Just have a morsel of meat to eat. And I had all the wealth and all the riches with a bunch of jittery nerves. That's how come people have to take pills to go to bed. They have to take pills to wake up. How many knows that's right? I leave because the flashes eat them up. But I don't have to take no pills. I don't have to take no pills to go to bed. I don't have to take no pills to get up. You know why? Because my resistance is strong. How many knows that Jesus said, resist the devil and he'll flee from yeah, but you got the house something to resist him with. How many knows that's right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. And I feel us putting on strength. Paul said if he becomes strong when he was weak, he's when I was weak, I become strong. Hallelujah. And then ever since December 18th, I've been going through war. That's right. Only God and the devil knows the things I've been through. And I ain't saying this. Nobody feels sorry for me. I'm just telling you I've been through hell on this earth almost ever since the 18th day. Hallelujah. December last year. Praise God. I said praise God. But I was talking to a man about a month ago. He said, Brother Cross said, hold on to God. He said, I don't care what you do. He said, hold on to God. He said, I know what you're going through. He said, it lasts about six months for me. But he said, God brought me through it. I broke through that thing. And he said, and now then I got the victory. Amen. So the church has got the victory. He said, God's adding to the church. All my needs are being supplied. He said, God's providing everything. Well, I believe what he said when he said it. But I was down so low. I mean, oh, sometimes you get down so low, it's hard to believe anything. It's hard to receive anything. But I held on to God. I believe it so he told me. But after he told me by him being somebody that's already been through it, if somebody's been through it, if you listen to him, they can help bring you through it. How many believe that's right? And I receive what he said. And here I am. And this is going on. It's about the middle of April here. Amen to God. But I want you to know, this took me five months almost. But God told me Wednesday night. He said, you broke through it. He said, you made it. Hallelujah. I said, glory to God. 
and I want you to know I've been able to make decisions a lot better than I was able to make decisions before God's given me the knowledge and God's given me the wisdom how to take nothing and make something out of it God turned me away out of the way to see it to be no way hallelujah to God and I know that the Lord is on my little side and say man Yes, he is. He's on my little side. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you have to do without, Lord. Appreciate God. That's right. I had it. Everything on my fingertips in the late 60s. And I was even the boss. Amen. I had everything I desired. Nice home. New car. New truck, nice furniture. Hey man, great big old fat income, assurance, security, and the natural. I had it all. I had every bit of it right there in the palms of my hand. Hallelujah! And I could say up to those that was under me, go, and they'd go. And I could say come, and they'd come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I had that respect from people. I just come right on to the office. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, praise God. He said, I know that I can ask you concerning these things wherein I need help because I know that you done been here. I said, well, set yourself down. I'll do what I can to help you out of your situation. Hallelujah. I said, glory to God. And I want you to know in the natural, I was up on the top. I was up, I was up on the top. I was next to the top of the top. You can get to the top how many as you can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I want you to know it was a different story then. I was getting to the top any way I could because it was in the natural. I said it was in the natural. But the Spirit of God began to deal with me. And there's certain things that I could do and certain things I couldn't do. I mean, those what I'm talking about. And I see it was a rat race. I said I seen it that I tell it wasn't nothing but a rat race. Hallelujah to God. And the Lord began to deal with me. God told me one day, He said, I'll bring you to the top. He showed me dreams and things about making it to the top of the mountain more times than one. But He said, if you ever get to the top of the mountain, He said, you're going to have to start from the very bottom. Amen. And come to the bottom. Amen. You're not going to do things your way, but you'll have to do things my way. How many believe we're going to have to do things God's way? If we ever make it, and you say, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And I forsook it all. I walked away from the natural. I walked away from the home and the automobiles. Hallelujah, the fancy furniture. And I left it all behind. I walked away from twelve to fifteen hundred dollars a month in hard times. Hallelujah. How many knows that twelve hundred dollars a month? was a lot of money in the 60s. Wouldn't it? But I was making that kind of money. I was living like the king. I had meat for every meal. Hallelujah. I mean, I could buy the choices for the meat for every meal. Praise God. I ate that high-priced sausage. I ate that high-priced bacon. And I say, glory to God, I ate my round steaks, my square steaks, and my triangle steaks. Hey, man, that God, I had money in my, my pocket. I, I could stack them $100 bills up, and I could thumb through the $100 bills. And I say, glory to God. Hallelujah. But there was one thing that I needed that I didn't have. Hey, man, it's something that was empty inside of me. And I began to pray and reach out to God. Hallelujah. And God told me, he said, you got a money-making book, a book in your hand. I had that big old policy book, a big old insurance book. Hallelujah. And I was king of the debit. I said, I was a king of the debit. Glory to God. And everything my heart says are, I was almost like Solomon. I didn't know how much as Solomon did, but I felt like Solomon in the natural. Oh, yes, I did. And my wife and our children tell you, they can remember some of those days. Hey, man, we had it. I said, we had it. But God spoke to me one day. He said, you ever going to get anywhere in me? He said, you'll have to lay down that long book and pick up that square book. Hallelujah. He said, in order to do it, 
He said, you're going to have to start from the bottom. And I give it all up. And I sold out. And I give hundreds and thousands of dollars. Hallelujah to the ministry of Jesus Christ. And the devil worked on me night and day and day and night. And told me how crazy I was. But I believe God anyway. I held on to the Lord. I said, I held on to the Lord. And I had to go through my dry places. I had to go through places. And I didn't know where the next meal was coming from for me and my family. But I want you to know that God provided. And we never did go hungry. Come on, say man. We didn't have the best. And we got down mighty low. But we always had something. When I live for God, God provided. But I had to turn away from my fancy way of living. Hallelujah. Praise God. But now there's time of restoration. It's a time of restoring. The time of coming back. No man having left houses and lands, wives and children and things of this nature. Hallelujah. Shall not receive a hundredfold in this life. And the life to come, life everlasting. How I many knows that's right? If you ever expect to live, you're going to have to go through a dying process. I, I preach that message about dying to live. How I many knows this is the truth? Hallelujah. And the way got rough and rocky. It looked hard. It looked like I wouldn't want to be able to make it. And saints of God, we've been going through it right here, as you know, for months and months and months. I got the victory. I got the victory tonight, and we'll have it tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. If they put anything on my tombstone, if they tell the truth, they're going to have to say he was a fighter. Amen. He didn't give up easy. Hallelujah. When they write my epitaphs or whatever, they're going to have to say he was a little bit hard-headed, and he must have been a little bit stubborn. But he was determined. Hallelujah. And we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it to the top. I said we're going to make it to the top. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody told me they've been trying to get somebody in the family to receive the Holy Ghost. And I didn't invite them in church over here how many times. So they told me. I was talking to them the other day. I went to their house and was talking to them the other day. They said they're going to come over here. For too long. Said so somebody been trying to get hold of us for a long time. Ain't been able to do too much, you know, get nowhere, make no headway. Hallelujah. And said so they done laid down everything, you know, it would cause them to hinder them any kind of way. They done laid it all down. Then walked away from it all. Said so it couldn't make no headway, seemed like. Hallelujah. I said, we'll do everything we can to help them. I said, you bring them on. We'll do what we can. I can't guarantee nobody nothing except you got to believe it, receive it, and work with it. How knows you you believe it, receive it, work with it? It's for you. Can you say man? But people's getting tired. They, they some people right now is beginning to get hungry. I've been talking to some people. And they told me, uh, I had one not too long ago, got a big old family, told me they was going to go somewhere just to, just to another few services. So and, and if something didn't change from where it was, they just to find them another place to go to church. Hallelujah. Singing is all right for a while. How knows that's right? But after a while, singing, it don't feed a starving soul. When a soul is starving for the gospel of Jesus Christ, singing will bless you to a certain extent, and singing is good in its place, and I'm for singing. But you can't have a, a service and you ain't got nothing but a bunch of nightingales up there. you got to have something besides canaries in a church. How knows you have? Amen? The song's good while it's been sung. Amen. We need to sing in our church. I'm proud we got some good Holy Ghost singing here. And they build these crowds off of these singing conventions. And they're going to go down the same way. When they quit having their singing convention, with the, uh, all the, the people love the old singing, they'll leave with the convention. How knows they will? And they're going to be desolate. They're going to be dry. They're going to be looking for a place to water. I believe this is a watering hole. They ain't talking about no water. They call these here beer joints over in, in Texas, down in Louisiana. They call them water holes. 
I got one down the slide L called water hole number two or three or whatever. <laughs> number one. If you miss water hole number one, you drive a little bit further and look long enough, you'll come to water hole number two. They got number two down there too. Amen. And being successful, before you know it, they're going to have water holes probably in picking you for so with. Well, this is going to be a water hole here, but it ain't going to be no beer hall water hole. This ain't going to be no alcoholic water hole. Amen. Now your ditches is going to be full of water. I believe that's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. The man of God went out there by faith and God spoke to the man of God and said, you believe? He said, I'll fill up the ditches. How knows you did? God's going to fill my your ditches up. God's going to pour water in your brook. Oh, yes, he is. Amen to God. Me, you ain't going to be no longer at the crossroads or drives. As I said a while ago, we'll come through all that. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Did you know they got artesian water here in this part of the country? They got an artesian well about a quarter of a mile from here. Amen to God. We got an artesian well right here. This is a well of water springing up under everlasting life that is uh, by the power of Jesus can you say man me you drinking of the well it ain't never going to run dry I mean we use this right hallelujah hey some of you thought this well was almost dry well we might have been getting a little bit of mud from the bottom but I tell you one thing my new well is going to fill up again and you say man how many wants your well to fill back up? Well, it's going to do it. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said praise God. Let me read you something else. I'm going to let you go soon. Hallelujah. I'm talking about God will provide. That poor widow woman, she said, I ain't got too much strength left. That's why she was thinking. You know why? Because they didn't gather but two sticks. Lord God, what kind of fire are you going to have with two sticks? <laughs> what the Bible said. Well, I there and fetched up two sticks. Oh, God, give us some heat here, Lord. God, give us some fire. We just got just one little pinch of a morsel left. I'll leave that rubby sticks together long enough. Maybe some fire. Don't run out of matches. Ain't got enough money to buy no fire with. Send the fire, Lord. Send the fire. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. About that time, a rugged looking man of God. Hallelujah. Knocked on the door. I said knocked on the door. He said, see who's at the door. And they looked at the door. They were so weak they couldn't hardly stand up. They done use what strength they had rubbing the two sticks together. Getting ready to start on the fire. And put the last little whole cake. I mean, oh, that's right. Get ready to die. Hallelujah. But they opened the door and looked at the hole. And here was a man sitting at the door and said, I got something that it says like fire shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. He said, you receive this word. Amen to God. You give me the last cake you got. And I'll speak to the God of the heavens. Amen. He'll supply your ever need according to this word. How many knows that's right? Hallelujah. And he, he supplied their need according to the word of the prophet. And he said, go to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there's something coming. I said, there's something coming. I feel it raining. I feel it raining by the Holy Ghost. I feel I hear the sound of an abundance of rain coming. Children, it's going to rain. I said, it's going to fill my little dry place out. Oh, yes, it is. God told me, he said, people will have to take knowledge of you that you've been with the Lord. Amen. Am I saying? praise his name thank you Jesus hallelujah well God let me preach like this to this many people think what I do with about ten times as me amen to God glory to God most of them can't preach like this to a thousand and I'll have to bring <laughs> I said you bragging I'm preaching I believe I'm behind the rose out of my hair. Preaching, preaching, preaching. How many believe that's right? 
You wait till I get my moth to. You talking about showing out. I'll be able to show out. Them folks in Florida said, come on over here. So won't you come on over here? Amen. So we've been been going through some revival already. So we're going to have a revival when you get here. Hallelujah. So we done been putting on the radio and getting announced and everything. And you get on over here. Hallelujah. Going to have revival. Well, I'm in revival right now. Amen. I got revival here tonight. How many believe we got revival here tonight? Oh, yeah, we do. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm. I know what they're talking about. I, I'm getting to know what they're mm, mm, mm. I'm getting to know what they're talking about. What they, I, I never could understand that. Mm, mm, mm. I never could understand. Man, me of a doctor. I mean, it was a doctor. He'll put them tethoscopes to you. What? <laughs> He'll start pecking around on you and moving them little, them little, little rubber suction cups all around on you. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.
Hallelujah. And God's got the table spread. Jesus said, come and dine. How many of those he did? Got fish upon the fire. The coals are burning red hot. And the meat's on the fire. Amen. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the meat to go with the Holy Ghost. How many knows the coals are burning? Hallelujah. The meat, the word is up on the fire. Hallelujah. How many is proud that the word is up on the fire? I'm talking about the meat is up on the coals. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And we're going to bring forth. Hallelujah. A refreshing of those that would listen to us. Those that will hear our words, we're not going to stand up here dead and dry. And every time we move out behind a pulpit, our bones are cracked because we're so dry. Hallelujah. I'm going to be lubricated with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be loose and ready to go. Hallelujah to God. There ain't going to be a stiff joint in my body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And no matter the difference how old when you get in our body, we're not going to have a stiff joint in mind your body. Hallelujah. And a man's going to die at a hundred years old and have the strength and the vigor and the vitality as a baby. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You're going to wake up in the morning. Amen. You're going to have 20, 30, 20, 40 years. And, uh, glory to God. You're going to have an eyesight. You can do everything but look around a curve and over the hill. They may not put you on no straight place. You'll see two miles down the road. Hallelujah. God's going to give you an eye like an eagle. And you say glory to God. Amen. He's going to renew mine your strength. We're going to mount up with wings as an eagle. We're going to walk and not be weary. And we're going to run and not faith. Let us say glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God turned me loose over here in Jacksonville like this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I ain't never known anybody ever had a bad revival in Jacksonville, Florida. I ain't never known nothing but a good revival. Every revival I've ever been in Jacksonville, Florida has been a landslide. Everybody that I've been around ever had a meeting in Jacksonville, Florida has always been a landslide. I think I'll move to Jacksonville. Well, praise God. When you got our Jacksonville here, we're receiving. How many knows that, right? I remember this old singer, him and, him and his wife, they sang an old song back a long time ago. Oh, something about going to Jackson. I heard no song about going to Jackson. Well, I'm going to Jacksonville. Hallelujah. They gonna they gonna wonder what in the world come out of can anything good come out of Picayune? Can anything good come out of Mississippi? Ain't nothing about a bunch of rednecks. How many knows that's what they call the people lives in Mississippi? Hallelujah. God, I tell you one thing, if my neck is red, it's because I've been turning this way and that way looking for more of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I say glory to God. Well, praise God. I said, thank you, Jesus. Them people like to swallow their false teeth over here in Pennsylvania. Hallelujah. Expect me to walk out there with short legged britches on up, spread up and down. <laughs> Hallelujah. With tennis shoes. <laughs> they thought I was going to walk out that platform with tennis shoes on and short pistol legged britches. Hallelujah. God. But I walked out there and that's that fancy suit. God done bless me with. Hallelujah. As I come out here in the name of Jesus. Brother Cleaner said, I want to introduce to you at this time an old Mississippi boy. And come all the way from the south up here to bring us the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. They were looking at me come out leading the coon dog. But instead of leading the coon dog, I had the word of the Lord in my heart, in my soul, and in my bones. Go ahead and clap your hands on the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God.